so hello everyone this is pankaj and i'm going to talk about the power of angular forms so everyone know that angular is like one of, angular have a few best things like the its own compiler then you can say a, uh, its own translation then um, you know forms and uh, binding and other things so out of which one of the core feature is form so we are going to take a look at um, what are the features that are being you know use uh, that are being used by most of the developer and how can you can use the, the those feature efficiently so little about little bit about myself as simon mentioned so i am senior software engineer working at deskera and also i am mvp and gd so if you want to follow me anywhere you can just type in pankaj parker handle and you can find me on all this platform github twitter facebook so let's begin with the session so in this session i am going to have a simple form like this and this form is very simple which have you know some fields like uh, like which are related to user only and i i have called this as a profile form user profile form so in this you can see that th there is a first name last name and it seems like email is going to be optional and not optional based on this uh, switch button then there is a current address field and there is a languages what languages does this user knows he can add on whatever he required so there could be i don't know added this three language so let's build this form in in angular form api right now this form is completely in html form only okay and what we are going to see in this complete session this basic one was very basic form without any uh, form api feature we are going to write a template driven form then model driven form and maybe if time uh, you know time allows us then we can we can take a look at how type forms can be created i am not going to go into the depth of it but i will just give you a clue how you can do that right now this feature is missing in angular form um so let's try we start with the uh, template driven form so before going to that i will let you know like there are two kinds of forms exist in angular one is template driven and other one is model driven so these two are like exactly opposite of each other in template driven the way of writing is mostly on template so you will be adding directives and um, adding the features on top of that particular form field but in case of model driven you will see that you will be enhancing the behavior of your field from your ts file or you can say the model side so we will begin with the template driven form so i just copied the html code from you know whatever we have seen from the basic page to here and you will see that this whole page is html only so let's look at the html side of it i'm going to close this thing so this complete project i have created with uh, uh with the cli and this is uh i i will go going to provide this uh, particular uh, repo url at the end and i'm going i am using angular 10 version okay so most of the thing will be um, will be based on i can say typescript is more strict here so we will see so as i did open the template driven uh, route let me see template driven route so i have configured the template driven controller here a uh, component here so this is the template driven component uh this file let me let me see one thing if i can remove everything okay wait so it should have the on it i was trying something and that's okay so let's begin and let's do this things so i'm going to open the template driven html i will increase the font of course it is if it is not visible i believe this should be fine okay i think this should be fine so simon is this visible properly okay i will proceed yeah so this is simple form and in form i have i am i have used angular material so you will see mat form mat directives so there is one input which is first name last name then email current address fields like address 1 2 state city postal code and there is one language array which is repeating over something and putting 
um, showing some languages that user profile has added okay so i'm going to commit this out this language thing for now we will look at it sometime later in the session and let's try to convert this simple html into angular template driven form okay so how to do that so do you know there is one directive known as ng model and that ng model directive helps us to uh, implement the two way binding behavior okay so i think we can use ng model directive in here so that we can make each field of our form as in uh, you know a two way binding driven so i'm going to say add one one field just one field with ng model variable as in first name and i just saved it and let's see what happens so as soon as i saved it it will automatically refresh and it said that the first name does not exist which is first thing so we will what we will do is we will quickly add this first name variable on our inside our component because this is basically binding with respect to your component to a template so it tries to evaluate the first name variable with respect to component and it did not find it so that's why it threw an error, threw an error. and let's see what happens now let me refresh this page and everything is not fine so there is a problem with this so it said that you cannot define a control without a name at at least it should have a name or just say stand alone so i'm going to also add a name property on top of it uh, name and then this will be first name and let's see what happens should it work yes it should correct yeah it should work so when you use any form api you should make sure that you are also using or so importing the two modules in your app module import so one is forms module and then the reactive forms module without that it won't work it will throw an error because you are using some directives that exist in the in the those particular modules okay so let's go ahead and do the same thing in uh, for other fields like first name then last name then email then addresses i'm going to remove this for now addresses then i'm going to rename the name attribute afterwards but right now i'm just pasting it so that i can do it faster state and then this one okay and let's go ahead and rename the name. then this one is email what uh, this is first name which is address this is address too and same way we have other field which is state and then city Correct. Not city postal code. Sorry, postal code. So, and and you know, like before, we got an error. Like first name is defined here, but uh, it is not defined inside the TypeScript. So we have to define this all variable inside our other uh, thing in template file. Otherwise, you will get an error. See, this there are errors because it is saying address two is not defined in the component. So quickly, I will define these things here email uh, postal code i think postal code address address one a state and anything else remaining let's save it and see i just saved and everything and we'll refresh the page okay something is remaining do you mean address to an address address is here address one address two email is there address address two okay this is missing city B. <clears throat> just going to refresh the page after 
Am I doing the changes in correct file? Okay, component ds template driven template. Okay, so what's the problem? Address two does not. Do you mean address? Address two. Okay, address field have a problem. Let's see. What is the what's the problem with that? Address. I said address and then address. And address should be existing here. That's that's there. So what's the problem? Save it. There's a problem with postal code as well. Okay, I understood. This is conflicting. This must be conflicting with the postal code. So that postal code is error will go away. <clears throat> and what else is remaining? Address. For now, I, I will. I, uh, Pankaj, I think some of the guys have uh, helped you in the comment. They're saying, I think you missed to rename one of the input, maybe address two. Okay, address two, address two. That's fine, I think, right? Yeah, that's fine, I think so. I will mm -hmm. comment out this thing and then we'll see. Yeah, exactly. That will work. Yeah. And then I can figure out later. Okay. We'll see first first block is working fine or not. Yeah, this is working fine. So that means there is no problem. I will quickly figure it out what's going wrong here. And then address is fine. Address two is also fine. Mat input, mat input. Okay, that is also fine. Mat input the same. I'll just remove this. I think so. There is a problem with maybe this guy. Add this one. Like this. I will refresh this quickly. There is a problem with address to address to address to, and it is saying that. Does not exist in a template one component or XML. Oh, I I should say address one here. That's it. Yeah, this should be fixed now. Basically, I just limit to address two. Okay, now it should work. <clears throat> yeah. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, see like this is now everything is in single form only. What that means is we have a form, and inside that there are multiple element exists. So each form field is generally known as form control or form field. So right now they are they are bounded using the ng model variable. So let's quickly check if they are changing correctly or not. Okay, and I will I will quickly add some value once it is refreshed. You can see the see the value here. So as you can see that, so that means it is happening. But now we we want to represent this form collectively, correct? It should be a single object which is going to represent the form. So how to do that in Angular? So to do that, you can use uh, a particular directive known as ng form, and this form directive is exportable, meaning you can get the value of this form, uh, this ng form directive, which is going to be this uh, the collective value of your form. Controls, which is first name, last name, and other controls, and put it inside some variable, maybe profile form, and that way you can get hold of it. So now what you have is now if you do profile form dot value, you will see that everything that is included inside the form it is going to be you are going to have it inside the profile form eventually. And let's see that. So now you will see that. You have this value in two places basically. One is inside your model, which is which is first name, last name, email, and the other place where you are maintaining the form, uh, form, uh, form, uh, total form, which is ng form. So you might ask me like, Pankaj, why we did the name? I mean, same attribute name, this first name, and then we said ng model. Is there a shorter way of doing that, or what if I change the name attribute to so see what happens? So you will see that you have said that I just changed the name attribute, and you what you are saying over here. I have two-way binding variable which is first name, which exists inside a model, 
and inside a form the form will hold an value of this first name one uh, which will be the value of first name so let's see what happens so as soon as you do that you will see that the name attribute reflects inside the ng form and the the ng model will stay as is okay so this is one of the good thing about angular form and what else we can do is uh, so you have seen that uh, like this is very simple way but generally when we retrieve a value from the server for particular entity like in this case we have a profile form correct so when we retrieve the information for this it will come as in single object so what you will find that when you are going to assign a value for each of this each, each of this value you will you have to explicitly bind this value correct so rather you can have something like this you can have a model correct and then for that model you can assign a value correct like this uh, so suppose after some time so i just presume that this is an ajax call i am just going to use set time out maybe 5 seconds and after 5 seconds you you are going to receive a value of model and that model value can be uh the same first name ankaj similar way there could be some last name then email uh there will be some value address will be equals anything which is and that state entity correct so see you can be number and then address can be anything and you have to you will get this retrieve this value from the server and you will bind it to the your model correct generally this case will happen so in this case what you can easily do is you can easily use this replace this uh, particular this thing what i can say um, models correct ng model to model dot correct so let me do that quickly so this will make sure that whatever you are getting a value from the server it will reflect correct name one why that's going on so model dot first name like did i save it okay okay nice model 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 okay let's see what happens here error 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 postal code 123 what's the problem now oh wait sorry this is now this is angular 10 so it is very strictly type so it should be i should specify any so that it will work because right now the by default the object type will be inferred as a object model type will be inferred as a object so it was not allowed me to add on those property so now it will work okay so you will see two things form will hold its own form value and you are uh, what i can say you are this thing um uh, you are uh, uh, what i can say wait a minute your ng model will have its own value like this so if you if you see the model also you, you will see that there is the same value only the difference is you are saying that when it goes to the form uh, so suppose you want some mapping like first name will be like this but while sending it in the uh, while while form value you supposed to send it should change so you can directly change the name mapping here okay so that way it can be good so let's see so see both places you are seeing some changes and both are the object so this way it is very nice so let's look at how you can add the validation over your uh, your template driven form so as i said template driven form is mostly a a place where you will be writing most of the code a declarative way when i said declarative way you would be using some directives or some html form only to 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 say something to the form so suppose in case i want a required i want to make this first name field as in required so i have to write a required attribute so that it will make sure that this this first name is a first name should be passed to make this form as in valid also i can mention some max length as well so this way you can easily add the validation on your fields okay so let's see what happens if i do that 
for 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 now i am going to just comment out this model or i just going to remove it and we'll see what happens okay i, I change that and see if i try to add uh, if i try to not pass this first name field of the five second it will be popped together okay or if i exceed the value 10 okay max length meaning you cannot go beyond that so that's good thing but if you if you if you not pass any value it is saying that the form has a problem which is which is you know it is required so basically you know in this cases we just don't want to show highlight that field as in red we should suppose to provide some information to user like what what went wrong correct right? so in such cases what you can do is you can just show that error to the user based on some things so over here i am going to use mat error uh, directive this helps us to show the error on the page and this error should be shown when when it should be shown so to do that suppose you want to get an information of first name field in terms of form control i mean in terms of form so you can just write first name control as in template variable like what we did over here so as this, as the ng form is exportable meaning you can get the value of ng form and store it in the template variable same way you can export the value of ng model so in here i am going to say take a value of ng model this is going to be a control value and let's see what what's what's there inside this first name control value so you will see that let me quickly go over the ui and uh, this is value okay so what ideally it should do it should it should show the value of uh, where is it at error first name control dot value correct did i save it okay so wherever error, whenever error happens so it should ideally show this wait a minute i'm just going to do something with it so whenever you, you whenever you want to show this let's look at the error directly and we, then we can see what happens what is there inside the error obviously so like value there will be errors then there will be values fresh time or touched those kind of attributes will be present on this first name form control okay let's see what happens on the ui why it is not appearing that the error thing which i just added okay so whenever is error whenever error is going to be there it will show that okay as soon as so it says that i just tried to print what value errors value so similarly it have a different things like value is the field is pristine or not pristine meaning it is touched or not also touched first time i mean it is clear or not i mean even if it is first time touched or not so let's see what it shows here in case of error so of course the pristine is going to be false because we have already touched it so see true true that means uh, the value is this one is true this one is true and this will not be show anything because it is undefined so it won't show any value okay so this way we can add uh, your errors here so in this case what we want to do is we want to show an error when the field is required in, in that case we have to intimate user so that case what you can say is there is one method exists on uh, your form control has error and inside has error you can pass required and inside that you can say uh, first name is required and uh, that was a long way and the, the i mean that that is the shorter way where you can call the has error method on the control and directly pass what kind of error you are looking for and there is other way also so i will show that other way as well see first name is required error coming so the other way is you can directly say that if first name control dot errors dot required is true then 
just show this. In this way, you can add on multiple error things. Like we also have a max length, and also there are, there could be different things. So this way, you can easily add the errors. And let's see what happens if I change this. <clears throat> so this this has you know eventually shown that the first name is required. Correct. Okay. Uh, let me uh, move on to the next part where, where suppose uh, what you want to do is you want to dynamically change the uh, validation of the fields. Like suppose uh, for now, I'm just considering one option where there, there are fields exist on the form and you want to make all these field uh, form fields as in required. Right now, only the first name is required. I don't know why this thing is happening. Let me quickly clear this out. I'm just commenting the set time out thing. Okay. <coughs> oh. Okay. Cannot read required. Okay. That was because of uh, because of this. If errors are not there, so errors can be null correct sometimes. So I use the navigation operator so that this scenario will be handled properly. Cool. Uh, let let it get refreshed. Okay, nice. So you will see that right now only the first name field is uh, uh, this thing required. Otherwise, in other case, you won't see an error. So what we want to do is we want to dynamically change the validation of your form in in this case. So on click of this, it should make mark all this field as in required. So how can we do that? So to do that. In template-driven form, mostly you can pass an attribute to your uh, form field. Like in this case, if you pass directly a required attribute, it will say that this is going to be true. But you can also pass something like this. You can pass a binding with some value. If it is true, then it will apply a required validation. Otherwise, it will it will based on false, it will re remove the required attribute. Okay. So I just mentioned one required attribute in here, and I'm going to paste it everywhere. Copy this, and I will place it on each input field. Okay. So this way, CP page, postal code, and let's see. What happens? I, I did not do anything, so because it will throw an error because of the strictness, I will define one variable which is bool, which can be boolean, and for now all the required are false. Okay, initially, and as soon as you click on the button which is on top, we will be adding one event on the click of it. That event can be mark all required and I will write this method in here. We're at the top. Okay. And this method, what that this method will do is this method will say required is equal to true. That's it. This is a very simple operation. By this way, you can understand that you know you can also add other validation as min, max, and other things. Uh, so let's see. So for now, let it get refreshed. Yeah, so, as soon, uh, so let's the form get loaded with the values. Okay. Now you can see that as soon as I do the mark field as a required, um, yeah, one thing is happening because by default it treats that once the field is touched or form is submitted, then show the validation. So I'm going to add a button at the bottom, which is going to say form submit button. Uh, by default, button type is submit, so no need to do anything. And let's see what happens. And I will also reduce down this time to some milliseconds. Okay, I did that. I'm going to say mark all field as a as a required. So when I try to submit this form, so but this button is appearing like this because I just see button, it should be matte. 
page button and you have seen that like when i click on that it it will show the validation everywhere and you can add a message using mat error and the ng if thing uh, to show what is basically required to be done by user like last name it is required and so on so we will move on to the next thing where you know you can just um you can you have the other section which was what was that languages so i'm going to just comment out this bottom part which earlier we have it but then i commented it so you will see that user can add multiple languages if he wants to add it <clears throat> okay and one more thing before going towards that you know basically what we want is we want when user press submit on click of uh, click of submit we want to pass on this complete object to the server correct so somehow i have to pass this from here to to the to the method so how to do that to do that you have to write one method which is going to be ng submit so internally angular you know hijack the submit action and fire the submit event on the form oh sorry not here on the form tag and you you can call a submit method okay and submit method what you can pass on is maybe complete form or if you just want to pass on the value then that will be great so generally keep a practice of passing form so that you can also do a lot of thing in there so i will show you I just wrote a submit method in here and going to write a submit method over here as well and we will also console the form and to get a look, get a feel of it what exactly we have so i'm going to have profile form in here which is passed from the method correct let's see what happens <clears throat> so i just save the save the file it will refresh automatically and we'll see uh, when i try to submit the form you got something which is ng form object and you will you will eventually see that it has a different thing where one of the thing is value and inside the value you will see that there this values are exist and why i said that you should pass the object because eventually this form can be invalid correct if suppose the first name is not being passed or or you know something like this is there and i can pass on the object i just click on submit and i just got an updated object where you can see that since this is not valid form you can easily check a invalid flag which is going to be true and the flag if the flag is invalid you don't have to make a call uh, to the server and if it is valid you can check either of this flag invalid or valid and based on that you can make, you can decide whether to make an ajax call or not like in here so similar so, so the way i said if it is valid then make ajax post to server and otherwise if you want to show some error then do that okay okay nice correct so one thing which you will observe is when we are writing um, more uh, template driven form most of the things have been done on the template so that's why the name is template driven form even though the if you check about the validation then also you will see that we are adding the validation via attribute and suppose you have any complex validation kind of you know asynchronous validation like if you have a username somewhere here and on type of it you want to check that username already exist or not so this kind of validator can be also written but for that you have to write a explicit directive with validator class implemented in it and you have to extend the ng validator service with multi true and that way you can do that so i'm not going to cover that because we i have a lot to cover in here so what else you can do is we were coming back to the point where i was talking about the languages so uh, what is the languages basically you can add a languages what you want right now it is hard coded so i'm going to clear out this uh, one two and we'll change it to model dot languages okay and uh, this way you can you know similarly by having a languages in the uh, this thing in the model you can easily loop over it 
languages. Easily loop over these languages, and then you can, uh, you know, uh, have similar kind of controls in here, and you can play around it. And that will directly reflect inside the model of here, model of this um, JavaScript object. And same similar, <coughs> similar. <coughs> sorry. <coughs> similar way inside your model as well as in similar way inside your form. Correct. So let's jump on to, jump on to the model driven part. Okay. So I'm just going to have con going to convert use or you know convert the same form in the template driven way or a model driven way so i'm just going to jump on the main page and going to click on model driven and this is same form i'm going to convert this form in model driven okay i'm going to close this html so that was the template driven because i think i have 15 minutes only and i have to cover model driven also so i'm going to open the model driven html and component this is similar uh, I'm going to wipe out everything. Okay. Uh, just to mention, in model driven, it is like different way. You won't be mentioning much things on the UI side, maybe one or two directive, not much. And most of the thing will be controlled by a model. Model is nothing but your component class. That will be taking care of your validation or whatever dynamic things you want. So in here, if you look at the HTML, okay, you will see that you will see that this is similar. Now we have to con convert this into uh, model driven form. So there are three things exist inside the model driven form. Three classes. One is form control, then form group, and form array. Okay. So if you look at this form, each as, as I said earlier, each form is known as a form control or form field. So whenever you want to create this field you will be going to using or use form control okay in sub, uh, suppose like if you have a you know bunch of form fields or form control that are going to stay together so in this case we have this all the fields which are uh, you know which are uh, basically mentioning or representing a model of profile form so this whole thing can be considered as a form group and in case of languages, you will see that as soon as I click on add, one language is going to be added. And this language will have two controls each. So internally, this language control is can be a form control. Then these two controls together will be form group. And when we are click on add, we are going to append one more form group at the bottom. That means it is going to be form array. So basically, we have to create a form group which consists of all of this. So let's do that. So to do that, what you have to do is you have to import a first thing which can help you to create create a form group form array or form a uh, form group or form array so this is going to be form builder okay and you are going to create a form group so that's why i defined one variable form profile form which is a form group so in here i am going to say profile form which is going to be a form group so there are multiple ways to do that so i'm going to use this way new form group so I'm going to create a form group, which will have various controls. What are those controls? I'm just for, for a quick thing. I will just copy that from thing from template driven to here. <clears throat> okay. So you just have to mention a JSON format where you can mention your all of the fields. Okay. So in here, what you did is you just mentioned first name, last name, and everything. So what is each field represent? It is form control, correct? Because form group will really is a collection of form control. So mention the default value of it. I'm going to say just say blank value. Similarly, I am going to have it for other things as well. Okay. <coughs> And we are going to look at this languages phenomenon at the end. So for now, just have this like, uh, have it like this. And on HTML, we haven't did anything as of now. So what we have to do is we have to use this form group on the model driven form. So what you have to do, like wherever you have mentioned the form at the, uh, form element, 
just go there and just say form group directive and what else you mention is the profile form or object that you have created in here so basically it has multiple controls so i just did that and then you have to say there are elements form elements or form control that are present in here to to locate them you can use form control name directive directly it will make sure that they will be used correctly from the form uh, control i can say so i'm going to paste it on each field quickly uh, So there are so many fields, and I'm going to comment out this languages part so that we will cover it at the end. So going to first name, then last name, then email. Uh, what else? Address. Address one or two. I said one, so one city, state, and postal code. So I'm just, I just went onto the application and I'm saying that changes are getting reflected or not. I hope there should not be any error. The problem is with postal code. Oh, I did not mention code here because internally we have defined postal code name and i just used the wrong name <clears throat> okay there is anything missing form field must contain a form control where is it happening let me see a form field must control match input somewhere 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 oh this is wrong somehow that just the t was missing in the email i don't know how so it, it looks for when form field is there, it should have at least mat input so that it will consider it as a form group. Yeah, everything is working fine as of now. So let's see what happening. I think it, it is way simpler than the for template driven form, correct? We have to mention less thing. Let's see what's what exactly is there inside the form group. So the same way, I mean, internally, whatever form you use, either it is my template driven or model driven, they internally look similar. There is no difference as such in terms of object of their each control. So if you look at this, you will see that you have succeeded with that with very little efforts. Okay. And what if you want to add a validation over it? So it is pretty simple. You don't have to do any changes like required attribute and all on the HTML side. You will be doing the changes on the model side. So if you want to add like uh, this first name, <clears throat> this first name should be required, then just mention what your form control, what is the default value of, suppose default value of it is function. And what is the next parameter will be array and that array will be uh, array of validators, okay? And there is also the third option, which is asynchronous validator, where you can mention a, uh, the validator, which will be making an Ajax call and depend on the response of that, it will decide either the field is valid or not. Okay, so as soon as I added the required valid detail in here, you will see that I should suppose to get an error for last name value when I submit the form. Let it get refreshed. Did I save it? Okay. Yeah. So as soon as I submit, see, you, you will see an error as in last name is not, uh, 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 is a required and which is not valid. So similar way, um, we can cover one more scenario in here. So this is way of how to add a validation when you create a form. So there can be situation where you want to add a validation dynamically, correct? So take an example of this only. So on top, there could be a button and that button, you have to mark all the field as in required. So I'm going to copy that button from the earlier HTML, okay? And I'm going to press it here. Okay, that was there. Okay. And better I can say call this mark call required method in here. And I want to make sure that all fields becomes required. So what I have okay, I can do that is 
I have to loop over all the form field methods, but just by saying uh, forms control. And to get all the controls of your form, you can use a, a property inside it, which is control. So control will have all the form controls, okay? And you can easily loop over this form control. So basically, you are going to loop over it using for each. And what you will get is you will be having control in it. And for each control, you will be doing something, okay? What will what that will be? So this is going to be form control, correct? You what you will do is you will just say, uh, I want to add some validator. So in here you can pass, get a method which is set validator. So what is set validator? It is saying validator. So that means it is the same array as that of what you are mentioning while defining it. Okay. So over here also you have to mention an array which is going to be validators. Not required. We want to make all the fields as required. Correct. Why this is happening like this? I just have to say why the for is not working because abstract control has no. Okay. What does that mean? Uh, oh, sorry. Let me see what happens. I think it is because of type script only. Let me see. Has no signature call signature, okay. Mm, form group dot controls, okay. Let me hack it for or controls missing is missing. Type any function, okay. So I will just do it in this way now. Then, if it is not working, I will just say array dot form. That it will at least work. Okay, it is not saying anything. Okay, so I will just try to show you. I don't know why type it is not allowing me to do that, but quickly you can just add. Suppose I want to add the validator to the last field. So what I will do is I can get access to the uh, last name field just by saying dot get. Then what what field you want to access, and then I can set a validator over it. And suppose I just said. Uh, <clears throat> this field should be required. So I can directly do that using like this. Over here, what I want to do is I was looping over all the control and going to set validators over it. I will see why it, was, it is not working. So for now, just say like this. I just saved the thing. Let it get refreshed. <clears throat> okay. And as soon as I Say this and I try to submit the form. See, this last name is required. And if I if I uh, if I try to do a submit, okay, it is required anyways. Why? Because I know mistakenly last name is required. Okay. Did I say required in here somewhere? Oh, sorry. This should not be here because we are dynamically adding it. So just to check. <coughs> So Simon, how, mu how much time I have, Simon? Uh, uh, we are already six minutes uh, um, okay. about in, in the next it. session, so, but it's totally fine. Yeah, I will, I will just wrap it in a two minutes, okay? Yeah, uh, so you can see that when I click on submit, initially don't provide any validation, but you can click on this and you will see that, okay? Mark all field, is it getting called? Uh, what is it? What else do one components? Okay, yeah, and one more thing which is catch. Once you do such kind of thing, you have to make sure that you are updating the validity of form. So this dot profile form dot update value or validity. Either update the value or validity of particular field or form should do. So what it makes sure is once you do any kind of dynamic changes in the form it does not reflect directly we have to explicitly say that so this method helps in that situations so just it got just refresh and once you say this oh, does it get reflected on this okay let me do the explicit way <clears throat> Okay, 
submit it then check okay see this is directly uh, so you, you have to make sure that whatever field you are modifying that that should that should update the validity of it not the form level because it won't flow at the bottom of the each child component each child form control so this way it will do and one more thing which is now i'm because of time i could not cover the the other part of this particular html was uh, uh this language is this can be form control and you can go in that way so perhaps what i can do is i quickly you got my all the changes and you can see that that form form group is also here okay let it get refresh so basically this can be considered as a form group and you can also uh, you know dynamically add form group in the form group array uh, dynamically and that way also angular shines a little bit there so there are and i know you must be confused like what should use template driven or model driven basically it depends on case by case so personally i love model driven because most of the things i do that are on the ts side and i can easily test them out without including the html part of it okay and last thing which is only one minute i will type so the one of the current challenges with with the angular forms you cannot have a types with it so there is one library made by nathaniel bessel so he have created one library which is uh, which name is ng init uh, form uh, reactive forms so uh, and he has also written some schematics like just by installing it and just by running one command most of your form will be migrated to type form where you you would be doing less mistake like you know what types we provide us to do is uh, when you uh, when you want to access any form level item uh, you you might end up writing a wrong spell uh, when you access in the form values so in here you can you know what you can do is you can just provide an interface while you are declaring the form group and when you are accessing it you will see that um, typescript will catch an error at the runtime on uh, and at the compile time only you don't have to uh, you know go with uh, just by you know checking the name here and there uh, in the component.ts so yeah that's all what i have i will share this repository and all on the uh, github or with simon and he will 